Story time about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him and my brothers. So a little background information, I was 13 years old and in 7th grade. And I had two older brothers, Josh and Alex, who were twins and they were both 4 years older than me. Whenever I was 3, my dad left my mom for his dentist. And we never saw him again because he decided to start a whole new family with them. Now because of that, my older brothers always felt like they had a specific role in my family. Especially because the guys that my mom brought home, they would only last a week. Well, finally, my mom met this guy who's really nice, and she decided that she was going to get married to him, but he despised my older brothers. Mainly because before he moved in with us, my mom would not depend on him for anything. Anything that needed taken care of around the house, my brothers would do it. And we didn't have too much money while this guy was loaded. Like the one time my mom and this guy, who we're gonna call Jerry, got into a fight. Like for part two. Part two about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him or my brothers. So like I said, my mom and Jerry got into this one fight. And it's a super long story, but pretty much all it made Jerry realize was that he did not have authority over my mother. And she didn't have to depend on him for anything because my brothers would always be there for her. Now, Alex was more of the shy one. Meanwhile, Josh was super hot-headed and didn't deal with anybody's bullshit. And fast forward, my mom and Jerry move in together. That's when we realized that Jerry was super abusive. And Jerry knew that he could pick on Alex whenever he wanted because he wasn't going to do shit. And most of the time, Josh wasn't home because he literally hated Jerry. The one time Alex came home and he did really bad on this one test. And Jerry was like, oh, he needs to learn discipline, blah, blah, blah. The next day, we all were sitting down for breakfast and we saw Alex come downstairs with a black eye. And that's whenever Josh flipped the fuck out. He grabbed Jerry, ripped him across the fucking table, and threatened him with a kitchen knife. And my mom called the cops, like for part three. Part three about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him or my brothers. So like I said, he said he needed to teach some discipline. So he literally beat the shit out of Alex. And we all didn't know until he came downstairs the one morning for breakfast. And that's whenever Josh flipped the hell out. He threatened Jerry with a knife. After that, my mom called the cops. I didn't really do anything but try to de-escalate the situation. But after that, Jerry called a family meeting down to the kitchen table. And he was like, I will not deal with this level of disrespect in this house. He was like, you need to choose between me or them. She was like, well, I'm not going to choose between you or my kids. And he was like, well, then you need to choose them leaving the house. They're about to be 18. They can leave and get their own place. So my mom ended up choosing Jerry because Jerry had a lot of money. And my brothers weren't really that mad about it because it got them out of the house. And my mom would send them a lot of money every month. And Jerry never knew about it. But now instead of him being abusive towards my brothers, he's way more abusive towards my mom. Story time, I became a stepmom at 22 and my stepkids hate me. So a little background information, I was 22 and working at Hooters. And I had this one regular who literally came in every single day that I worked. I mean, it wasn't really creepy because I did give him my schedule because he tipped really well. But that's besides the point. The one night he asked me out and obviously I knew that he was going to pay for our dinner. So I said yes because I was hungry and I did not want to pay for food. So anyways, I go on this date and I actually end up really liking him just to find out that he is 40 years old. Fast forward a few months, we start dating and he realizes that I still live at home with my mom and dad. So he's like, oh, like, you can move in with me, but first you need to meet my kids. And I, like, thought that his kids were going to be, like, two and three years old. No, when I went over to dinner the one night at their house, there were four kids who were literally all above the age 13. And every single one of the girls gave me a death stare as I sat down in my chair, like for part two. Part two about how I became a stepmom at 22 and my stepkids hate me. So like I said, we're all sitting down in the dining room and there's four kids. There's one boy, three girls. The one boy is 14 and all the other girls are 15, 16, and 19. And we're going to call my boyfriend James. James is like, okay, well, I'm going to go back to the kitchen and finish cooking. You guys should bond a little bit. So he leaves me alone with these little fucking roaches and they just start firing shots at me. They're like, you're a gold digger, aren't you? Don't worry, my dad will never marry you so you're not gonna get any of his money. So after that, I told James that they need to warm up to me a little bit more before I move in. So for the next month, we would try to plan things with the kids. But anytime that I was going to be there, every single one of them would be like, we're not going, we hate her. Eventually, James just kind of said, fuck it, and he asked me to marry him. So I moved in, and then a week later, we got married. His kids didn't show up to the wedding, and James had to go on a work trip. So I was moving some of my stuff into the house from the car, and the kids fucking locked me out of the house. This has all been within the span of five months. What should I do? 
Story time, I didn't know that I was dating my best friend's brother. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school. And I know you guys are probably thinking, how the fuck didn't you know that you were dating your best friend's brother? And we're gonna call my best friend Rima, and we're gonna call her brother Alex. So I had met Alex whenever I was in fifth grade. We never hung out outside of school. We were more of just like friends in school. But I only met Rima last year. Also, Alex was a year older than us. Well, one of the art teachers who usually taught the senior class, she just gave birth to her baby, so they decided to mix both of our classes, aka the one that Alex was in. Well, my art teacher decided to pair us all into partners and have us do an art project. So I got paired up with Alex. Fast forward, we end up liking each other and we start dating. And usually whenever Rima and I hung out, we would always hang out over my house because she said her family was annoying, and Alex and I would only hang out during school, like for part two. Part two about how I didn't know that I was dating my best friend's brother. So like I said, we always hung out at my house because she never wanted to hang out at hers, but this weekend her whole family was supposed to be gone, so she wanted to throw a party, and she was like, OMG, you should definitely invite that guy that you like. Now listen, I know you guys think it's weird that she probably didn't even know that I had a boyfriend. Whenever I had talked to people that were best friends with her before, and yes, multiple best friends. This girl went through best friends like she goes through underwear. They had all said to not let her know who you like or who you're dating. Because she would either try to get with them or she would get with them. And if she couldn't get with them, she would just send them nudes out of nowhere. So fast forward, I get to the party. She comes up to me. She's like, I'm so fucking annoyed. My brother's here. And then she was like, oh, did you bring the guy that you like? And I was like, no. And then I walk into the living room and I see my boyfriend. So I go over and I give him a hug and a kiss and Rima starts screaming at me. After that, she told her brother that I bullied her so that way he would break up with me. And he did. Story time about how my sister was hooking up with my boyfriend. Little background information, I was 15 and in 10th grade and I have never had a boyfriend before. Any guy that I was sort of talking to, we never made it out of the talking stage. But fast forward, I met this one guy who we're gonna call Jake. And because of how tragic my love life was, I didn't expect us to get into a relationship. But he ended up asking me to be his girlfriend. So of course I said yes. I was super excited that I had a boyfriend. And then he met my family. And my older sister and I were like super close. So I told her all about him. And she just couldn't wait to meet him. Real quick, I just want to give a big shout out to Lumino for sponsoring today's video. Lumino Whitening Kit is one of the best ways to whiten your teeth without paying hundreds of dollars. Especially if you have sensitive teeth, this is the next best thing. Although I have veneers, they only cover the front of my teeth, so my teeth can still be very sensitive to certain chemicals that other brands use in their products. If you guys want to go check out their 7-pack for under $15, the link is in my bio. So whenever he met my sister, she was being super talkative to him. And I thought it was just because she was excited to meet him, like for part 2. Part 2 about how I found out my sister was hooking up with my boyfriend. So like I said, he came over, he met my sister, they got along super well. Fast forward, my parents decided to have a family gathering and my sister was like begging me to invite my boyfriend. Which I didn't plan on inviting him at all because my family is super annoying and would make a big deal about the fact that this is my first boyfriend. She was like, okay, but if you guys are seriously in a relationship, I think that he should meet your family. So I ended up inviting him. So my mom called me to the kitchen to help pass out drinks, which was super annoying because my sister was literally doing fucking nothing. So after I'm done with that, I'm looking for my boyfriend and he's nowhere to be found. So I go upstairs and as I'm about to walk up the stairs, both of them come down. And when I asked what was wrong, like why they were upstairs together, she was like, oh, I was showing him to the bathroom, which I felt super weird about, but because she was my sister, I let it go because you're supposed to trust your family. Stuff. So part three about how my sister got with my boyfriend. So things started to get really sus because every time that he would come over, they would always find a way to be alone with each other. So fast forward, my sister and I are supposed to go to one of her friend's parties. The whole time though, she kept asking me if I would invite my boyfriend. And no offense, I love my boyfriend, but I need space away from him sometimes. And not to mention, I felt like I was dragging him around like a dog because she was the one who would want me to invite him everywhere. Fast forward, I end up inviting him to the party. My sister gets super drunk, really sick, and my boyfriend offers to take her to the bathroom. And I was like, excuse me, I'm her sister. I can do that. Thank you very much. So after I say that, my sister looks at me and she was like, I would appreciate it if you would just stop being like this because I feel super sick right now. Like, okay, play the victim. Anyway, so I go to check on them in the bathroom. They're not in there. And one of the bedroom doors was open. So when I went in there, I saw them doing the nasty. I asked her how long this had been going on and she said it was, was since the first time that they met. And now I'm ignoring my sister until she goes to college.
Story time about my extremely creepy neighbors. So a little background information, I was 12 years old and I was in sixth grade and my family and I lived in a really small town where everyone knew everyone. But our new neighbors had been building their house next to us for the past four years. And finally, when they were done with the house, this house was huge. I mean, probably because there were like eight people moving into the house. There was the mom, the dad, four kids and their grandparents. So like eight people. But I was super excited because I was like, okay, this is awesome. I get to meet some new friends. But after two weeks of not seeing anybody playing in the backyard or anybody on the school bus, I started to think that their family was super fucking weird. And everyone in our neighborhood liked to gossip. And everyone was saying how they barely see the people who had just moved in. So my mom decided to take one for the team and make some brownies, take them over to the house. And I ended up going with her. So we go up to the house, we knock on the door. And one of the kids came and opened the door, but the dad ran over and grabbed him. Like for part two. Part two about my extremely creepy neighbors. So like I said, my mom and I took some brownies over there and one of the kids opened the door. And when he opened the door, he had a bunch of bruises all over his body. The dad came running over and ripped his son from the door and slammed the door in our faces. And all you could hear was him screaming at his son. So my mom and I went to walk away before the door opened. And he was like, sorry, my son knows better than to open the door to strangers. So he took the brownies and then I asked him if I could have a sleepover with one of his daughters. And he was super hesitant at first, but he said that I could only have a sleepover with her if it was at my house and not theirs. Which my mom was completely completely fine with anyways because she thought that it was a little bit weird that his son had bruises covering his whole body. So that night when she came over to sleep over my house, I asked her how her brother got all those bruises all over his body and she said that he just fell down some stairs. But after that, we became best friends and we would literally hang out like five times a week until the one day I knocked on their door to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone. Like for part three. Part three about my super creepy neighbors. So like I said, I became best friends with their daughter, but the one day I went over her house to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone. And when I asked when she would be back, he was like, she went to go live with her mom, so probably never. Which was super weird because she never mentioned that she had another mom. So fast forward two months, my family and I are sitting around the fire pit when we hear someone scream help. But we weren't sure if that's what we were actually hearing because it was so quiet. And then all of a sudden we heard someone banging on my neighbor's basement door. You know those metal doors that people usually have outside of their house that lead down basement steps? Yeah, well that's where the banging was coming from. So my dad hopped over the fence to see if that's where the screaming was coming from also. And then not even a minute later, my dad hopped back over the fence and it looked like he saw a ghost. But he ran inside, called 911 because i was so young the only thing my parents told me about that whole situation was that the girl that i was friends with was still alive and her parents were keeping her in the basement along with two of her other siblings but then we also found out that they weren't even her real parents they were kidnapped at the hospital when they were born ở đây có bạn nào đang học vẽ hay đã vẽ rất lâu mà chưa tìm được set treo cho riêng mình chưa nhờ thông qua các câu hỏi mà các bạn hay hỏi mình thì hôm nay mình sẽ chia sẻ về set treo của mình nha mình đã từng thử qua rất nhiều set treo vẽ khác nhau từ mắt đến rẻ nhưng cá nhân mình thấy cái loại này là ok nhất luôn set này là set dreamy nha cái chất tre nó rất là đậm nên mình không có sợ nó bị trong trong như những cái loại khác cũng không cần phải tô đi tô lại nhiều lớp và làm nó bị dày cái hình vẽ của mình hơi tiếc là nó không có màu da mình phải tự pha ra nhưng đó cũng không phải là vấn đề lớn đúng không mọi người linh mình sẽ để trên bio nha bye bye <cười>
story time about how I got my ex, toxic best friend, jumped. So a little background information, I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. And like any of these toxic best friend story times, she was super jealous of me for literally no reason. She would literally try to be better than me in everything. Like when I did a sport or a club, she would join immediately right after. And it wasn't a, oh, I'm going to join my best friend. No, it was, I'm going to join so that way I can show her that I'm better than her. For example, in sixth grade, I was captain on the volleyball team and she decided that she was going to try out her sophomore year. She played it off as if she just wanted to try it out, but then I got announced captain and she was pissed off when she heard that. She literally blocked me on everything and she came from a super wealthy family, so she was used to getting whatever she wanted. And my whole friend group would literally tell me, you need to stop being friends with her. She's toxic. She's this, she's that. The only thing that stopped me from being friends with her was the blackmail. Like for part two about how my best friend was obsessed with me in a creepy way. So like I said, I woke up at three in the morning because my phone kept going off and it wasn't dinging or anything. It was just the light flashing when it would go off and on. So I look around for Madison and then I see my bathroom light is on, but the door is shut. So I just brush it off and I go on my phone and I see a bunch of text messages that were sent from me, but they weren't sent from me. Like obviously somebody had went on my iPad and started sending people messages. So I look at these messages and it's all texting Madison. And I kid you not, it's literally pictures of me while I'm sleeping that she sent to herself. Like there was a picture of my hair, a picture of one of my birthmarks. And then on her side of the nightstand, there was literally a lock of my hair. Like she cut my hair off and it was in a Ziploc bag. So at this point, I'm actually really creeped out and I go and tell my mom. And my mom talked to her mom and apparently she's done this story time about how my bank might have ruined my chances of going to an Olivia Rodrigo concert. So a little background information. In December, I got tickets to Olivia's concert. I thought it would be the perfect Christmas gift for my sister and I to go to California and go to her concert. And I got two floor seats. So I was super excited when I gave her the tickets. We were both like screaming, you know, that we were going to be going to a concert. We had the best seats. Well, knowing that I had the tickets, I hadn't checked on them for a few months. And this concert is on May 20th of 2022. Well, a few days ago, I was going on Ticketmaster to check the tickets. And it said that they had been voided. And I had no idea why. So I was frantically trying to figure out what the hell had happened to my tickets. And I didn't want my sister thinking, oh my god, like she really didn't get the tickets. So I was sending emails with Ticketmaster, and they said that somebody had filed a dispute. If you don't know what that means, that means somebody was like, hey, that's my money, I'm taking it back. Like for part two.